Shalom Kharim. I'm Stephen Benuni. You're watching Israeli News Live. We are still on the road here trying to work our live stream news broadcast in as well. It's a little difficult when you're, when you're traveling though. Um, and we're just getting things in order here before we go back uh, to the front lines, so to speak, uh, on things that are going on around the world. But I wanted to come and share with you about the Temple Institute's uh, breaking news about the live heifer. They have now, they're starting to raise the live heifers in Israel, something that has not been done for more than 2,000 years. And there was a lot of anticipation was about what was going to be announced by the Temple Institute. And a lot of people, quite frankly, were expecting to hear them announce that they were getting ready to start the, the construction of the Third Temple. Now, m mind you, let me just say this here though, uh, what they are doing, clearly, uh, as, as the rabbi says on there, this is the prerequisite for the building of the third temple. They had to be able to start raising the red heifers. Um, but <clears throat> when you see these beautiful creatures here in the film that was done uh, for the Temple Institute, and you cannot help but realize, why are they raising red heifers? Well, it's for sacrifice, sacrificial service. So... I know that uh, Brother Begley had asked uh, um, uh, Rabbi Glick when he was uh, interviewing him, would they actually start sac sacrificial services in the temple once it was reconstructed? Uh, and Rabbi Glick did not seem to indicate one way or the other whether or not they would or would not do that. Uh, but Rabbi Glick stated that, you know, the temple, the third temple will actually be a temple that is for all nations. Uh, now, <clears throat> This is something that we clearly see in Ezekiel's prophecy that there would be coming a third temple, but that the temple in Ezekiel clearly comes down from God. Uh, it is not a temple that we would actually build here. It is a millenni it's a temple for the millennial reign. And so I do have uh, issues regarding the building of the third temple in the manner that it's being done or being proposed to be done now. In fact, the Temple Institute has also said, because uh, we ask uh, quite directly to them when we were there uh, about, this probably been about a year ago, my wife even asked this question directly to the, to, the, uh, to the speaker there, would they actually build Ezekiel's temple on the Temple Mount? Well, you may not be aware of this, but there's not enough room even on the Temple Mount for Ezekiel's temple to go there. Uh, and he said no. There were no plans to build the third temple on the Temple Mount as far as according to Ezekiel's prophecy. Uh, they do believe, though, that they would build the temple on the Temple Mount. And he also stated to us then that the only way the Third Temple could go up would be with the cooperation of the Palestinians. That seems pretty far-fetched at this point. Now, there is a tent of meeting, which is, it has got a tent roof with a structure that has been put outside of Jerusalem uh, that has already been prefabbed up to begin with. And, of course, uh, we find out that Pastor Begley, once he had interviewed Rabbi Glick, they had said they would be able to put together a third temple on the Temple Mount in a matter of months. Uh, that everything was prefabbed, pre-ready to go, including the, the altar where they would burn the sacrifice. But <clears throat> in reporting this, I do want to share with you, uh, I will actually be going into a, 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 a teaching video on this uh, about what is God's requirement as far as is his requirement a third temple for his second coming to be in place. And clearly, uh, what seems to be going on right now is a millennial reign. And this is one reason why I said recently that the Vatican is trying to fake a millennial reign. Because you have to keep in mind what is going on in Israel right now is Jerusalem is becoming an international city right before the eyes of the Israeli people. They may not be aware of this, but they are becoming an international city. We've clearly brought this out through pictures and uh, <clears throat> uh, documented uh, this as well as even Pastor Begley brought out in his own news broadcast with uh, an Israeli there that confirmed that the checkpoints that we have seen there are indeed, that are being constructed on Highway 1, are indeed actually checkpoints. Uh, so <clears throat> with the city being internationalized, and we see all the infrastructure being put in everywhere. They're making major highways north and south of uh, f coming up from uh, the West Bank. Uh, they've got the new train rail that they have been building now for several years uh, to bring in people from the airport, etc. They're really planning a very big event. So I believe that the announcement of the building of the Third Temple is not very far off. 
And by the way, when that comes out, then your two witnesses will come on the scene. Because if you look at the two witnesses based on Revelation 11, there is a measurement of the temple. There is, there is things spoken about that the temple, you know, he says, the angel says, take a measuring rod and measure the temple. And uh, so they come at the time what appears to be the construction of the third temple or the beginning of the construction of the third temple. Now, going back to the red heifer, this is what really does concern me is the red heifer. Because many people, they look at the book of Numbers, and when you read about the book of Numbers, and, and this is what the Temple Institute is citing is the book of Numbers for this, uh, it, it re is a requirement in the book of Numbers that a heifer be brought up. Uh, and they must be without spot or blemish. But I am very much under the belief that Yeshua was that ultimate sacrifice that came and gave his life. Now, that being said, I have to also consider several other passages in the Bible. This will be something we'll be teaching on later, though, in a separate video from this. Uh, because we do know that in, in, in Levitical law, for example, Moses spoke of the sacrificial service. But I actually question, could this have actually been a, uh, what would you call that? A, um, could this have actually been a permissive will of God, the sacrifice, the sacrificial service? Much like, what, for example, when God was giving the manna to the children of Israel. God gave manna to the children of Israel. And, but then the children of Israel began to complain, and they began to lust, and they said, we remember the melons, we remember, and they named all the things that they were remembering back in Egypt, and then they mentioned the fish as well. And God got angry with the children of Israel for their complaining. They were not happy with the bread, the manna that God had rained down out of heaven. Uh, for them, for their, for their food. They weren't happy about this. He tells them they're going to a land flowing with milk and honey. Notice, so he never says anything about calves, bulls, and bullocks, and things like that, but milk and honey. Now, when God was angry with them, he was not angry with them over the melons. He never said anything about that, but he said the blood. They lusted for blood, and this angered God. Why? God was trying to bring with Moses the children of Israel back to the way it was in the Garden of Eden where they lived off of the fruit, they lived off of the grains, the, the, the natural things that God had given. But God did permit them to have the flesh. He brought in the quail. But notice, though, it was not God's perfect will. And I have a feeling even sacrificial service ended up becoming under this same type of idea. I say this because, look, I just want to share a couple of passages for you. David in the psalm, and he mentions this several psalms, but I'll give you a couple here. In Psalm chapter 40, verse 6, David says here, starting with verse 5, Many, O Lord my God, are thy wonderful works, which thou hast done, and thy thoughts, which are to usward. They cannot be reckoned up in order unto thee, if I would declare and speak of them, uh, he says, they are more than can be numbered. Sacrifice and offering thou didst not desire. Mine ears hast thou opened. Remember, remember what the scripture says, the angel says in the book of Revelation? He says, to he that hath an ear to hear, let him hear what the angel says to the churches, right? Now, David is saying, sacrifice and offering thou didst not desire. You didn't desire a sacrifice. See, so he said, then he says, mine ears hast thou opened. He opened his understanding, in other words. Okay? Burnt offerings and sin offering hast thou not required. Interesting, isn't it? So, it may not have been, because remember, Moses comes down, and what does he have? He has the Ten Commandments in his hand the first time. And he sees the children of Israel. And what did they made? They made a golden calf. Isn't it interesting? A red heifer? A golden calf. Moses breaks those Ten Commandments. It's sad, isn't it? He breaks the Ten Commandments. And then he has to go back up. You see, God would have never given a whole bunch of laws to the children of Israel. But what happened was because of their sin, Moses has to return to God. And he comes back down with a new set of Ten Commandments, as well as we get Levitical, uh, well, I won't say Levitical law, but we get, we get 
part of the law that we're seeing, because we find this in the book of Exodus. We're not seeing this in the book of Leviticus, which always has kind of made me wonder anyway, because he speaks about the book that is put in uh, the ark. So now, I want to, let me share with you a couple other ones, though. This, this is just interesting. Other one is Psalm. For thou desirest not sacrifice, else I would give it. Thou delightest not in burnt offerings. You see, again, this is why I believe that what God was doing with Moses when Israel sinned so greatly was he gave a permissive will. And we know that Yeshua would come and give his life. The Messiah, the Mashiach would come. I can tell you a lot of great things. We'll get into that in the teaching. But let me, let me share with you a couple of more, though. We need two or three witnesses, as the Bible says, to see, is this really so? Let's take a look at Hosea chapter 6, verse 6. It's another very interesting one as well. And Hosea says, um, and I'll start with verse 5 there, Therefore have I hewed them by the prophets. I have slain them by, um, I got far from my eyes, so please forgive me, by, by, my, by the words of my mouth, and thy judgments are as the light that goeth forth. For I desired mercy, not sacrifice, and the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings. So see, and, and I say this for my rabbinical brethren in Israel, you're building a temple, but yet you've got the prophets, even Isaiah in Isaiah chapter 1 says the same thing. God does not, he desires mercy, he desires repentance, not sacrifice of bulls and goats and lamb. You know, you know, and that's why I say, I believe it's the permissive will of God. And I wonder if this is not had a lot to do with the golden calf. So we'll go into that in the teaching segment later, but look at here. But, like, but they, like men, have transgressed the covenant. There have they dealt treacherously against me. See? They, they have transgress the covenant in what in these burnt offerings so it, it this is not going to be something god is going to accept at all at all my brothers and sisters and, and malachi is another one if you offer the blind for sacrifices is it not evil and if you offer the lame and sick is it not evil um Hang on, let me, I, I, I got to get you to Isaiah. There, there's, one, there's another one as well, and I'll just, I'll have to kind of quote it by memory because I know I don't have time to pull it up here for this broadcast here, but let me just share it here with you. Um, and that is, God says in another place, that killing, killing uh, a bullock, I believe it is, or, or, or is he that, or a lamb, he said it's the same as if you killed a man. So, you know, <laughs> So when we see that the Temple Institute is speaking about bringing in the red heifers, and, and I understand, my Jewish brothers, I realize my heart goes out for my people because you have to understand, their eyes have not come open. David said his ears were open so he could hear, right? He said his ears were open so he could hear. And so therefore, and God, God even says in one of the prophecies, my people perish for a lack of knowledge. Okay, so this is, this is the same thing that we're seeing again in this day here. Israel is back in their homeland. Yes, God has brought them back. They're, they're zealous to want to please God. But instead of truly searching out the word of God, we're going the wrong way. And Isaiah says the spirit of the Lord God uh, is, uh, excuse me, wrong, uh, my apology there. I meant to go to chapter 1. Which, by the way, my Jewish brother, that, that's the scripture for, for, no doubt, the Mashiach. The vision of Isaiah, the son of Amos, which, which he saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem, in the days of Uzziah, Jonathan, and Hahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah, hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth, for the Lord hath spoken. I have nourished and brought up children, and they have rebelled against me. The ox knoweth his owner, and the ass his master's crib, but, but Israel doth not know. My people doth not consider Ah, sinful nation of people laden with iniquity and a seed of evildoers, children that are corruptors. They have forsaken the Lord. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel into anger. They are gone away backward. Why should you be stricken anymore? You, 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 will, revo you will revolt more and more. The whole head is sick and the whole heart faint. From the sole of the foot even to the head, there is no soundness in it. 
but wounds and bruises and putrefying sores, they have been closed, neither bound up, neither mollified with ointment. Your country is desolate, your cities are burned with fire, your land strangers devour in your presence, and it is desolate and overthrown by strangers. And the daughter of Zion is left as a cottage in a vineyard, in a, as, a, as a lodge in a, in a garden of cucumbers, as a besieged city. Except the Lord of hosts had left unto us a very small remnant, we should have been as Sodom and Gomorrah, and we should have been like an, uh, unto, unto Gomorrah. Hear the word of the Lord, you rulers of Sodom. Give ear unto the law of our God, you people of Gomorrah. To what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices unto me? All right, watch this. This is verse 11. Saith the Lord, I am full of burnt offerings of rams and the fat of, of fed beasts. I delight not in the blood of bullocks or in the lambs or in he goats. When you come to appear before me, who hath required this at your hand and tread my courts? It's amazing. Bring no more vain oblations. Incense is an abomination to me. The new moons and Sabbaths, the calling of the assemblies, I cannot away with it. It's iniquity, even the solemn meeting. Why? Because of the sacrifice. God is looking for a contrite spirit. He's looking for a repented heart. Israel, this is what God wants from you. He didn't even, he's not even asking you to build him the temple. But if you did, he's not looking for the burnt offering. We'll go into more on this later. But do take, pray about this. Many, many scriptures on this, and I want to share this with you. For, the, for my Christian brothers and sisters, I believe you probably understand this very well because you realize that Yeshua, Jesus of Nazareth, was the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. It was His sacrifice to come into the world. He paid the, he paid the price for our sins. So therefore, God is not interested in the blood of the red heifer, these innocent creatures of God. He's interested in their lives being spared. Remember, when he created them in the Garden of Eden, did he not say, it is good? Or did he say, it is good, and kill them later? No, he said, thou shalt not kill. I'm Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live. Shalom.